Hey guys, it's very early. It's very dark outside. There's a thunderstorm happening. We're gonna talk about makeup today and really some choices I've been making with my beauty routine, not just makeup, but also skincare to keep a little situation at bay. I'm talking about some really stubborn like breakouts that I've had around my nose and I feel like they've been there now for maybe between two, one and a half, two months. And it kind of started out as something that I just figured would pass pretty quickly, but it really hasn't. And now I'm kind of wondering if I can attribute this to hormonal changes. The fact that um, for the first time in a while, I've had a span of months here where I'm not pregnant or nursing, just the fluctuations where that's concerned. My body had previously been in that state for for quite some time, so that's possible. But it's just kind of a stubborn area, and I'm gonna talk about in this video some things that I think have helped actually improve it, um, and also a few things that made it worse. I'll probably get to those at the end, but there was something that I would typically use on a blemish that kind of backfired on this area. So I would say some key things that I've thought about are gentle, gentle, gentle. Like, I'll still kind of switch things up with certain foundations or concealers if I'm testing something, but I'm trying to take my skincare and anytime I'm not testing a particular makeup product, just my like foundation and base type steps in a very gentle direction. So that's what I wanna show you in this video. So I'll just mention first a few skincare things that I had switched to. I think I mentioned this in a vlog, how I had picked up this duo of products, which I thought was really handy, the Aveeno Clear Complexion. I can't remember where I found it, but I was reading an article about the Aveeno Clear Complexion Foaming Cleanser and how that's a really gentle thing that you can use and also perhaps improve your um, blemish situation. And what's happened by improve it, I mean like it was taking over a larger part of my skin right over here on the side. It was more red, it was more bumpy. And when I really started to like buckle down and do something about it, it was where I thought I was seeing it almost start to spread up my cheek. Like I saw little dots up there. And I thought as I would say to Tyler, oh hell no, like that's not happening. So now what's happened since I've been kind of making a point to use certain skincare products and gentle foundations and stuff like that. It's actually come back in size. It's centering right around here. It's less red, it's flatter. It doesn't feel like anything to the touch. It doesn't feel irritated at all. I don't know if dormant is a word you use to <laughs> describe blemishes or if that's just for volcanoes. Uh, but it feels like it's just like on the verge of really going away, I think, um, because it's kind of flaky. I'm really scared to go at this with some kind of scrub. Maybe you guys can let me know like if that would be a smart idea or not, because I am seeing like some dry skin kind of flakiness, maybe remnants of old little blemishes that were within this cluster that kind of want to flake away, but I'm scared because I really, I don't want to overdo the issue. You know, I don't want to make it worse by way of over treating it, you know? But this is what I've been using, the Clear Complexion Foaming Cleanser. I've been using that in the morning instead of just um, putting on my Garnier micellar water all over my skin. I thought maybe I need to get my skin even cleaner when I start the day. And then also this Clear Complexion Moisturizer. I've been using this every morning under whatever else I do. Even if I'm using like a BB cream, I still have some of this underneath. This is all I have on my skin right now. And this has a surprisingly moisturizing texture. Like there's some thickness to it, but it does have the salicylic acid in both of these things. And it says helps prevent breakouts for clear, even looking skin. So these came in a duo at Walmart and I'll use this at night sometimes too. Or I have been trying this little sample of a um, drunk elephant moisturizer. I can't remember the name of it, but I got it as like a Sephora or a perk. You guys know I love my Equate um, cleansing cloths that are really great for makeup removal, even around the eyes. I have loved them so much. I never felt like they were harsh, but yet I thought maybe with this particular situation, maybe it is too harsh. I don't know. So I got the Clear Complexion Cream Cleanser. I really just got this for the purpose of something I could like keep near a shower. Like I, I needed a couple of these in various bathrooms that I have here. So I thought I'd try the cream cleanser as well. And I've just been like for makeup removal, putting some of this on, working in a little bit of water with it as well, and then wiping it all away, which this gives a little bit extra, I think, makeup removing power, wiping it away with one of these Garnier Skin Active Micellar makeup removing towelettes. I feel like these have got to be some of the most gentle towelettes I've used, and they do help me like actually get eye makeup off. And then once I'm done with those two steps, I just give my skin a light rinse and I'm done. Then like I said, I'll either moisturize at nighttime with some of this, the clear complexion or that um, drunk elephant stuff I've been
been working for like maybe the last week or so, but I feel like I have seen improvement in the area and I think it's going away. So makeup wise, I have thought about some different gentle things that I can use. You guys are probably gonna be like, she's sponsored by Lino. No, I'm not, but I did get this. I feel like I tried this a long time ago and it's the Positively Radiant CC Cream SPF 30. It says medium tinted moisturizer. They need to make this in other shades. Like this was all that was available at my store. I'm not saying this is all they make. Maybe there's a lighter color. Maybe there's a darker color somewhere. I was looking online and I had trouble finding like any sort of consistency. They didn't even really explain it on the homepage. But this is an outstandingly beautiful CC cream formula. Like it looks so pretty on the skin. I realized that it's something, being a CC cream, it is very forgiving. This particular tone that I have could cover like people lighter than me, people maybe a little darker than me, but you go too much outside of that range and people do kind of need their own shades. So I'm taking this as my opportunity to say, Avino, if anybody might be watching, like do something more with this because this is a good product. Another one that I like that I just feel like gives me some lightweight coverage, just a less heavy feeling than a lot of foundations. I feel like therefore it must be somewhat kinder to my skin, but the Garnier Skin Active BB for oily to combo skin. And this gives me more of a matte BB cream look. This one gives me a little more radiance. However, something I've been known to do with these is add in like a little drop of my Makeup Revolution Champagne um, Liquid Highlight. It's so beautiful. Even though this has a little glow to it already, it's really nice in here. You could add it to some of this. Both give me some moisturization, but I still kind of like to wear that clear complexion moisturizer, at least a light layer of this underneath. But this one, I've talked about this before from Garnier, how for some reason this oily to combo skin formula of their BB is pretty nice as far as like light to medium coverage goes. But more matte, a little more dewy looking with that. And that's where I'm gonna pick up and just get started and I'll, I'll talk about more products as I go. But I will use like maybe a pump and a half of this product. And I almost overlooked it. Like I was just kind of thinking about what can I use for daytime that has some SPF because the clear complexion moisturizer does not have any SPF. And so I was looking around and then I thought, hmm, how about something tinted? And so I've been working this in on and off and I'm really liking it. And I've kind of been going back to my Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush from Sephora. Love this little brush. This is the like the rouge offering here. So I like that. Had it for a while, but it makes a nice little concealer foundation hybrid brush. You see the little bit of like pretty glow and finish that this CC cream gives the skin. It's not over the top, but gosh, it really does look fresh. Then here's another semi treatment type thing that I've been using, this Neutrogena Skin Clearing um, Blemish Concealer in Light. Unless I really feel the need to test something different, this is something I've been using most of the time around my nose, even like the other side of my nose where I don't really have anything or like I had a little random zit down here. I like to think it's helping in some manner. I don't know how much, but I'm using it. It makes me feel better if I'm gonna conceal the area to do something that's maybe got some sort of treatment. So this does have that, again, salicylic acid going on, but it covers fine. The staying power isn't amazing and it's kind of like, tough for this product because this is a really hard staying power area for me, you know, around the sides of the nose. That is where stuff is quicker to break down. So by the end of the day, if I'm going to go somewhere or something, I might add a little more. Then for my under eye darkness and any melasma that you may see, I use my Tarte Creaseless Concealer and this is in the shade 20N Light. I have been loving this for the under eyes. Um, I talked about it more in depth in my video where I reviewed this and then the, um, Aspen palette, but I am just so enjoying this texture and I feel like when I cater to the zits and then I do this I can get away with like that nice light coverage from the Aveeno and I do like using this brush still the one that came with the Tarte product I think it spreads the product really really nicely I kind of spread it downward and get brightened up in this entire zone It's just a little tricky sometimes to get in around the innermost corner of the eye Other than that cannot complain one bit like it, the coverage happens so quickly and even the melasma area, I mean, it's just wonderful. This is kind of nice for a way to one step it. With some concealers, like I definitely have to do some correcting first because whatever concealer I'm using doesn't cover enough, but this just kind of minimizes the layers. Oh, and one other thing I've been doing with this, I forgot. I'll do a little bit right here 
right down the nose and I feel like that brightens too and somehow makes everything look more covered and finished. But the reason why I'm not putting this around my nose breakouts is just because this feels like a very emollient concealer and I don't want to overload that zone with oil. Then I would just lightly set my under eye concealer and I mean you can use whatever type of powder you like. I'll reach for Maybelline Fit Me, I'll reach for Laura Mercier. Another one that I've been trying a lot just out of sort of experimentation mode is this Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Setting Powder and I feel like I've had good results with this. I haven't tested it in a full-on like let's jump in the pool with our makeup on situation but just for general general wear, you know, staying power throughout a day. I feel like I've enjoyed it and it's just kind of a nice tone, a nice texture. I'll sometimes dab this around just as my only powder on my skin, but I wanted to tell you guys about something else I've been drying. I found like a little sample in my collection of some Bare Minerals original foundation in medium beige and I thought, wow, that looks pretty on my skin, like a light bit of it actually on top of what's happening here. I felt like I kind of kept some of the glow from the Aveeno CC cream, but yet things felt set and things felt even more even, you know? And so I had that, but then I questioned the age of the product and I decided to buy more recently, which you may have seen in a vlog, the medium beige, full size, just the original Bare Minerals foundation. And I love the packaging. I love the little sifter thing here. So I tap out a small amount of the product. Like, yeah, I would say just that much that much for all over the face. And then I've been using this Pro Mini Flawless Light Powder Brush from Sephora. I don't know what it is with me and the mini brushes from Sephora, but they're, they're plenty, I must say, they're plenty. So I get what seems like about half of that powder kind of picked up on the brush, and I just sort of sweep it slash semi buff it across the skin, not really focusing on under eye here, but just more so other parts of the skin, just getting it all set. And I was seeing myself in daylight with this little combo of things on yesterday and I thought, oh, this looks really good, you know? I think that's actually what I said to myself in the mirror. Like, I don't know, it's kind of fun to come up with a combo of things that you feel like is being sort of gentle and nice to your skin and the finish of them is actually like really natural and pretty. Like, I don't feel as though this Bare Minerals product takes away all of the glow in my skin from the CC cream. And you can get even extra glow if you add a little, little else. And then, oh, here's another powder that I will sometimes throw in. It's the Super Goop Invincible Setting Powder, SPF 45. I normally have like actual hatred toward things that are packaged like this that have powder coming out through a brush. But whatever the delivery mechanism is here between, you know, what's allowing powder to get to this brush, like there is actual powder coming out all the time. It's really just a matte translucent powder and it actually is working. Like product is coming out there. You don't have to doubt it. I think that's kind of a cool thing and I like the thought of a quick reapplication of SPF in that manner. But yeah guys, these are the like kind of complexion steps slash base steps that I've been taking with my skin that I think have allowed it to look fresh, not feel like I've got really much heavy product on it all. I mean, we're talking about a CC cream and as far as all over the skin goes, a light dusting of some Bare Minerals powder. And I feel like it's a pretty gentle way to go. Also, you know, addressing my different problem areas with different formulas of concealer, I do think helps. What I think I'll go ahead and do is just finish my face off, which will involve brows, eyes, lips, little cheek color as well. Just so you can see what everything looks like all done. And then I do have a few products that didn't work so well for me in this phase of trying new things and I'll explain those at the end. Here's exactly what else is on my face. I used my Viseart Plum Bronze Palette and used like the top two bronzers and then the top two um, blush shades today. So pretty lightly, like I didn't apply much product. And then my Makeup Geek Starlight Highlighter, which I love. I pretty much just have that right here on top of the cheeks. In my brows, I got my ColourPop Bang & Brunette Brow Pencil. More on that in an upcoming ColourPop video. And I've also got a little benefit gimme brow in just for hold. And then on my eyes, I'm wearing this CoverGirl um, Peach Punch palette, which so far I'm kind of underwhelmed by. My lip gloss is the N Cosmetics Lotus Blossom shade. You know how I love those. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to pass along something that I think is working for me. And if you're looking for just some lightweight base options for your makeup, maybe some of these things will help you out a little bit. I would say I am a overall pretty much normal skin type, and this does last like 
like the entire day on me, that uh, Aveeno CC Cream. But again, I am setting it. I'm pretty much always putting at least a light layer of powder all over. Now, I wanted to mention a few things that did not work for me. One thing that I just didn't feel like did anything, it didn't necessarily make any problems worse, but it didn't take anything away, was this Tarte Blemish Bully. It's just a salicylic acid treatment. It looks like a clear gel. I gave this a pretty long period of use, actually. I felt like I used it straight for a couple weeks and just didn't notice anything one way or the other. I didn't think it was really making the problem worse, but it wasn't taking it away. Also, something that has been a no-fail product for me where zits are concerned in the past just does not work for me now on, at least not on this area, this weird kind of red, patchy, almost more acne type deal. The Clean and Clear Persa Gel. This is a benzoyl peroxide acne treatment. I'm guessing whenever I've used this, I've put it on those really like deep feeling pimples, you know, and I feel like it dries them up faster and sometimes they never even like come to the surface. It's always worked for me in that sense, but when I tried to put it on this stuff, it made it even more red, like more irritated. It was almost like it was too harsh for it. And by the way, none of the pimples that I've had associated with this little red patch have been deep, big pimples. Like it's just been kind of this surface area stuff. Here's another thing I did not like that I tried. The Neutrogena Skin Clearing Complexion Perfector. I have this in light. Um, I showed this the day I got it in a vlog, but it says provide sheer coverage while clearing breakouts. And I really, really don't like the way this goes across the skin. It just looks like product sitting on top of the skin. It doesn't like become one with the skin. It doesn't mesh in. Like if I were to blend this in across my hand, you could see like any texture. My hands are pretty nice and smooth, but now I can see just every little avenue of skin texture that I might possibly have there. And it's kind of the same way on your skin. You just move it around. You can see it just moving around on top of the skin and just sitting there. It cannot hold a candle to the Aveeno or the Garnier. I don't know if you had just a crap load of excess oil in your skin, if maybe that would make this melt in more, I'm not sure, but it just, it does nothing for me. So those were my little misses in my journey here with face stuff, trying to not irritate my little zone over here. But I'm excited because I really do feel like it's getting better. I felt like it was starting, you know, I could see signs of it drifting up this way. I did not want that to happen. It is since kind of shrunken down. Feel of it, it just feels really flat. I actually could hardly notice any texture to the touch. And that has been another thing that I've been trying to be conscious of, to not touch it, to not pick at the area or anything like that. But let me know if you guys think, um, if it's an area that doesn't seem to be like an active pimple? Should I use a scrub on it? Should I try to exfoliate that area? Because I do just have some dry skin that's seeming to want to slough off from it. But anyway, that's my story, guys. I hope this helps somebody. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!